There's a guy on your left here, he'll be on the fence. I got him. Oh my oh! god! Whoa! <laughs> what fuck happened? <laughs> Shit! Did you see the cops? <laughs> fuck me! And on that less than polished note, how are you doing fellas? This is No Shackanals Rush. 16v16, and I am playing, as usual with every game, alongside my BF3 buddy Teo. And while I'm primarily the assault guy with the AUG in this game, we're gonna start it off with the Amtrak. We're on the attacker side looking to plant the bombs, and we're making the push in this big armoured beast. I'm extremely fond of the Amtrak for a few reasons. The first reason, a fairly obvious and direct one, the guns are simply superb against infantry. For moments like this where you're pushed up against a bomb, the grenade launcher and the machine gun, Devastating against infantry, and the key word is infantry. They're not spectacular against enemy vehicles, but that leads me on to the second reason. The Amtrak has extremely solid armor, and that means you are a pain in the ass to take out, but at the same time, your guns are not nearly as threatening as that of a main battle tank. So I think enemies tend not to focus fire on you, just because you take so long to bring down, that it might not seem worth the effort to them, because you don't come across as threatening as a main battle tank. But I think that would be a big mistake, especially considering the third reason anybody can spawn in an Amtrak, no matter where it's positioned. On the deployment screen, certain vehicles like a Venom helicopter will always give people the option to spawn in, even if the vehicle's already taken off and it's in the sky. But some vehicles like main battle tanks often don't. I know they do on Carg Island because I was playing that earlier today and I found it a bit strange. But the Amtrak always gives you the option to spawn in, provided there's space in it, which there usually is, because people usually spawn in it and hop out the moment they're alive. Not to mention, there's six spots available in an Amtrak. And because that Amtrak's always offering that spawn point for the entire team, at the very front lines, it's like a motivator to make people get shit done, because as soon as they spawn in it, they're right up there in the action, and when they step out the vehicle, they've got no choice but to start shooting people, thus making more shit happen. I guess it's kind of like a TF2 buff banner, where it's like the stepping stone to making your entire team get forward and be more productive. I guess I'd like more stuff like that. War drums or something, to get the players in the mood for fighting. I have no idea how they might be incorporated, but that's besides the point. This is now Rush on Grand Bazaar, and again, 16v16, that's kind of how we roll in Rush. 32 just seems kind of right for most of the maps we like to play, such as the Grand Bazaars, the Seng Crossings, the Damvan Peaks, to some degree, Operation Metro, I guess. And somewhat less popular, I kind of like No Shark Canals and Terran Highway as well. And those maps seem pretty well suited to 32 players maximum. Although I do sometimes want to make the exception in cases like this, where we're defending Grand Bazaar here, and they're spawn trapped, yet there's not really any way we can stop the, I would call it an unintentional trap, unless we literally ran backwards for about 100 meters and just went AFK, because there's not really any other place the defense could go at this point. If they were to try and go forward, you'd simply end up walking out of the combat zone if you didn't get shot. At which point, the only option you have really is to just sit here like I'm doing behind a truck or behind a pile of bricks or behind a bus, and just wait until someone decides to run forward, at which point they're in your sights and you're gonna shoot them. So then oftentimes Grand Bazaar can just be a big tedious stall on the first base where you just sit still and once in a while just shoot a guy who runs out of his spawn. And if that's tedious from the defender's point of view, imagine how it feels from the attacker's perspective, which I can safely say I'm not totally unfamiliar with, and it sucks. <laughs> it's times like those where I wished I picked a 24-man server where they occasionally do retain the high action, but they do flow a lot better. Towards the end, the action did start to pick up a little more where they were making pushes down this left-hand side, and while Tio was guarding it, I came off the road to give him a hand with the AUG. I revive them once there, but they start getting a little too close for comfort. I fall back to reload, heal up a little, and I make the mistake getting a little too keen to revive again because I thought I'd cleared the area and it was safe to revive him again. And with that mistake, they got in and planted the bomb right at the death, but fortunately our team was solid, which makes a nice change. We push in, clear the room, and get off a safe defuse to end the game. To round off, a couple of nice games of Rush with the AUGA3, and I think that's gonna be all. Like and favorite, guys. Come on. This is going to be the go back and forth thing for us now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be the motif at the end of every good game. Like and favorite, guys. Thanks for watching, and goodbye for now. I've just basically saved myself some commentary time. Thanks, Tio. Welcome. We're like a bunch of fucking idiots, aren't we?